In this lecture, we're going to introduce you to optical devices and show you the advantages and the disadvantages of these devices. Primarily, we're going to be doing this with um, over, uh, excuse me, with slides. On occasion, I, I actually have some of the equipment here. The first category of devices that we're going to discuss are um, handheld devices. The primary advantage of a handheld device is that uh, they're easily, easily, easily obtainable. You can go into any camera store, you can go into any Walmart or Kmart, and you can buy for yourself a handheld magnifier. If you ever go into the homes of some of your rehabilitation clients, especially the elderly clients, you'll see they've got either a box full of these things or a drawer full of them that their grandkids have given to them as birthday gifts or as Christmas gifts. In a perfect world, we we, we, meaning those of us who work in low vision clinics, think of handheld devices as being best used for short-term tasks. In this particular example, it's using a handheld uh, magnifier to look up a, an address in a phone book. Now, I, I say that we view it as being, uh, the best use as being for short-term tasks. That doesn't mean that you can't use it for other things. In fact, I know clients who use a handheld magnifier to read their newspaper, or to do um, to read a book it's just that uh, in a kind of a all things being equal we think of it as being best used for short-term tasks and the reason is because you have to manage the working distance of that device here's an example of a person using something which uh, the younger students in the class might not even know what this is this is a typewriter most people these days are using uh, word processors and uh, really don't spend much time with typewriters but the challenge with this device is that you need to be able to find the working distance, get it in focus, and maintain that focus. And the reason that we think of it as being best used for short-term tasks is because um, if you once you find that distance, <coughs> excuse me, and um, for example, look at a phone number, you don't have to actually track across the line. The entire phone number will be contained within the field of view of that handheld magnifier. By comparison, if you're going to be starting to uh, read a book or look in, a, in an instructional manual, after you find that distance, as soon as you start to move your hand across the page, that can and typically will introduce problems of maintaining the proper focus and getting the full benefit of the magnification. So short-term tasks is typically viewed as the best use for a handheld magnifier. Our next category of magnifiers are stand magnifiers. And stand magnifiers are quite similar to handheld magnifiers in that um, they're easy, easily obtainable. You can go to a stamp store or a, um, a coin store and you will find uh, that those things are, are uh, easily purchased and readily available. In fact, the only difference between a handheld magnifier and a stand magnifier is that um, is the piece of plastic that holds it. Now, the major advantage of a stand magnifier is that you can rest it on the page and it's what I call idiot proof. If it's sitting on the page, it is in focus. Here we have a slide of a gentleman who demonstrates that the stand magnifier is not exactly idiot proof because he, he is in fact holding it up to his eye and the paper is out there at probably 15, 20 inches from, from the stand. Uh, the ideal use of a stand magnifier is for uh, doing reading, continuous text reading. Uh, and the reason it, it's ideal for continuous text reading is because um, the focal distance is set. You don't have to keep managing that. The big disadvantages of a stand magnifier are, number one, posture. Here's a picture of an elderly woman who would complain bitterly about the fact that every time she uses her device, her head hurts and her eyes hurt, and she blames it on the magnifier. And while in some respects it's the magnifier, it's not really because of her eyes, it's because of her posture. Sitting wherever you're sitting right now, just turn your neck to an angle like that, and you will find that it is extremely difficult to be able to even under, to uh, hold your um, hold your neck like that without causing yourself to have some some pain. You also notice that she is using a clipboard, and that clipboard uh, helps flatten the paper and stabilize it. But on that book she's using, she's reading. There's really going to be a problem with um, uh, the binding. As you take that stand magnifier in towards the bank binding, what you're going to find is that there's going to be a blurriness of the print. So when people use stand magnifiers, while it solves the biggest disadvantage of a handheld magnifier, meaning you have to find the distance, it also introduces a whole constellation of other problems. Posture problems, the importance of having a clipboard, and problems with trying to get the, um, 
keep the thing in focus along uh, the, the book binding. And while those are all, all problems, the biggest problem, in fact, with a stand magnifier is illumination. As, um, as we talk about in, when, we, when we discuss our environment, illumination is the most critical feature that we have to deal with when dealing with low vision clients. And what we see here on this slide is on one side, the left side, uh, we have a decent amount of illumination, but you can even still see some shadows. On the right side, because of the design of that um, handheld magnifier, you see that it really blocks most of the light, if not all the light, and it's, it's a huge problem for people with low vision. So while the stand magnifier is really great from the point of view of it finds the focal distance and maintains it for you, all in all, I am not a big fan of stand magnifiers because of all of the major limitations that, in fact, they do introduce. However, there is one way that stand magnifiers can, in fact, work exceptionally well, and that's with what is known as an illuminated stand magnifier. And this slide shows three stand magnifiers without illumination and two stand magnifiers with illumination. They have batteries in them that um, allow you to um, maintain a, a really wonderful amount of light on the page. And in that, from that point of view, then it solves really all of the problems for people who are trying to who have difficulty with finding and maintaining focal distance as well as have problems with illumination. And now what I'll say to you is that the more I work in this field, especially dealing with uh, the frail elderly, people who are uh, still living independently in their homes but are really struggling to just meet their, their basic daily needs of health and hygiene and nutrition and physical activity and managing all their medications, um, the use of a, an illuminated stand magnifier is really um, one of the best ways to go with clients like that. Now what we're going to do is introduce perhaps the most important concept, in fact the concept I want you to know and to understand when it comes to low vision devices. And that is the concept of field of view and magnification and the ease of use. And here's the concept. The the higher the magnification, the smaller the field of view of the device, meaning the less words you'll see through it. And the smaller the field of view, the harder it is to use. One of the things that a lot of family members will say to us is, why don't you just sell us the most powerful device that you have? We, we don't care about the money. Well, the most powerful one to the person who doesn't understand this equals the most expensive and also equals the best. And as it turns out, when we send our clients to low vision clinics, the low vision clinic spends a lot of time trying to give them the lowest powered magnifier they possibly can give them. And the reason for this is that the lower the power of the magnifier, the bigger the field of view, meaning the more words you'll see at one time. And the more words you see at one time, the easier it is to use. So if you go back to my uh, elderly person who is just struggling to maintain some quality of life, if we give them more powerful magnifier than they really need, we're going to make it more difficult, in fact, much more difficult for them to use that device. And in fact, they will most likely fail. So in a low vision clinic, the moral of the story is you strive to give the person the lowest power, power possible. And the reason being that it makes it easier for them to use. Why? Because of the field of view. And I'm now going to take you through a demonstration of this field of view. And you're going to see slides kind of going in and out here as I do this manually, but I believe this is the best way for you to, to experience this. So what we have here on the first slide is a stand magnifier that is showing um, about, let's see, four lines of print along the vertical and across the horizontal we've got one, two, three, three and a half, almost four words. So we've got a pretty decent field of view there with that particular slide. Put another slide in there and show you that we've really not adjusted our magnification very much. We still have one, two, three, four, all five lines vertically, three to four lines or, or words across. And if you were looking through that magnifier, you might say, that's not really too bad. I think I could read with that. It's not necessarily my choice, but if I had to read with that, I think I could do it without too much difficulty, without too much adaptation. Now we're introducing the little more higher magnification, and there are a couple of things you're going to notice right away. Going across the horizontal, we still have two and a half, maybe two words on some of the lines. We have a less light, and we've even got some hot spots of some glare. 
The higher that magnification, the more focused it makes the illumination. Perhaps when you were a child, you had a, a magnifier, and you know how you can you can burn wood, or you could uh, you could burn leaves, or you can burn your finger for that matter by holding that hand magnifier and focusing the sun. Well, that's exactly what you're experiencing with the light here, that it creates hot spots as well as really dim areas. However, the point I'm really trying to get at here is to notice how your visual field decreases as we increase our magnification. All of a sudden now, we only see two lines vertically and not even two full words. The word vision is on the bottom there, but the V is cut off and the N is cut off. And I have no idea what the top word is because we only see a few letters of it. So all of a sudden now, you're really getting visually boxed in and what that client is going to demonstrate is a slower reading speed, worse comprehension, and just less enjoyment with the reading task. What you notice now as we get into the really higher powered mag magnif magnification is that we now start getting distortions of our words. And you, you begin to recognize that you have virtually no comprehension of what, what it is that you might be reading or talking about there. And then we go to our most powerful slide and you may be sitting there going oh my uh, when i give these lectures live most of the students in the class have a a, a verbal response to this this is a, a this would be a terrible way to read and i'm hoping that through this demonstration of these slides that you now have um, a, a visual appreciation as well as a verbal appreciation of what i had described earlier so the moral of the story here is the following we strive to give people the lowest magnification possible. And the reason is because the lower the power of the magnification, the lower the magnification, the bigger the field of view. The bigger the field of view, the easier it is to use that device. We are doing no one any favors if we're giving them more magnification than they really need. In fact, from the functional point of view, we are introducing a lot of problems that we actually don't need or want to introduce. Now, in your Sunday newspaper, typically in the comic section, there's an ad there for, um, I don't know what the price is these days, $19.95, $29.95. You can buy a full page magnifier so you can read the entire newspaper. And a lot of clients will come in and say, uh, after we've prescribed our device and we have them seeing two or three words at a time, they'll say, well, geez, why can't I use one of those full page magnifiers from um, uh, the uh, Sunday uh, comic section? And what I have here is one of those magnifiers that I've bought. And hopefully right now what you're recognizing is that that magnifier, by definition, has to be really, really low power. In fact, I'll tell you that those magnifiers are around one power. Where most of the magnifiers that we work with in a clinic, if a patient comes to a low vision clinic, we're looking at four to ten times magnification. And if we get into some of the electronic magnification, we'll go into 40 and 50 times. So the a uh, full page magnifier is kind of like putting a, a band-aid on a gangrenous leg. Um, it just it just doesn't do anything for these people. They need so much more power than these magnifiers offer that it simply is a waste of their money. Now, people will say, can you make a magnifier that's that size? Meaning the size that will uh, magnify the whole page. And the answer to that question is yes. We could make a magnifier that magnifies that whole page. However, as it turns out, the only area in which you would in fact see is the very center area of the magnifier if it was 4 power, 8 power, 10 power, a higher powered magnifier. The reason that the magnifiers, uh, the field of view of the magnifiers get smaller is because of, a, uh, of a, an optical principle of mother nature. And that principle of mother nature says that as the power increases, the distortions also increase along the periphery or the sides of the lenses. So the reason that the manufacturers make these magnifiers smaller and smaller and smaller as the power of those magnifiers goes up is because they want to make sure that they don't create a lot of distortions. They want to give you the opportunity to, um, to see clear vision. So to review that point, yes, we could make a full page magnifier. Unfortunately, you'd only be able to see out of the very center of it, and it really wouldn't make much sense. So, 
you now should have enough information that you can analyze this slide from the visual point of view of how much magnification it has. Let me talk you through it for those who may have difficulty seeing this. We see four words across. In fact, we see the whole line across and we see three lines vertically. This is a bar magnifier, again, something you can purchase on the open market. The bar magnifier, because of the, how much print you can see, by definition, is a low-powered magnifier. In fact, if you look at the real print, meaning the unmagnified print, and you compare it to the magnified print, you'll see that it only magnifies it about um, two times. So by simply looking at the field of view and looking at the comparison of the magnified print and the real print, you can get some sense of how much magnification that device has. I'll conclude by saying that you can, in fact, take a whole series of magnifiers and without looking at them, line them up simply based on the size of the lenses. And as a general statement, the smaller the size of the lens, the higher the power or the, or the more the magnification. The smaller the size of the lens, excuse me, the larger the size of the lens, the lower the power of magnification. Sorry for that. The smaller the lens, the higher the power of magnification.